Hello and welcome to Crap Kitchen. It's still crap. See? No kitchen remodel. I have a lot of props today because we're going to talk about fruit, which I eat quite a bit of now, and fuckery. Dante had his nine circles of hell. So I decided to make a chart. Here's my chart. These are called the nine circles of fuckery. I will take a photo of it and post it in the comments. Yes, people. Well, I'm speaking particularly to women today because I was talking with a guy recently, and this is a guy who I like very much, and he really is very supportive of women um, and is not an idiot in any way. I like him. And he mentioned something, and he said, because... It's an irrational fear. And I said, hold up, buddy. Women's self-hatred is on purpose. We do have, um, I'm screwing this up, but we don't hate ourselves by accident. And this is what my nine circles of fuckery is about today. It's about, I've made a little chart and I swear we will talk about fruit. I've realized that um, I realize that people don't know how to pick good fruit, and that's why they hate fruit. So I want to talk to you about that. I know how to pick good fruit. Um, just call me Fruity Pebbles. Uh, so here's the thing. We hate ourselves because um, organized religion and big business work together to... Uh, make us hate ourselves. So let's get on with the chart. Okay, let's start with Eve, Eve. That will fall under religion. My friend Joanne, who is deceased, once said to me, stupid ate the apple and that's that. And it really made me laugh hard. But um, because of the creation story, um, women are both blamed for everything and told that we exist for the pleasure of men, not for ourselves. <laughs> Wrong. Um, two. Shame over our bodies. If you have a daughter, do not comment on what her body looks like. There is proven science, research it yourself. Um, there is proven science that talking to girls about their body, whether it's your body is wonderful, you are too fat, or you are too thin, talking about it is harmful to them, okay? So don't do that if you if you want a healthy daughter, all right? Um, and the shame that we get as women, particularly uh, women of my generation and older, is that we've been told that we should look like a modest, supermodel without makeup, right? That's what we should look like. And we will move to three. Corn syrup. Corn syrup is the culprit. So big business um, has made corn syrup uh, quickly and readily available, and it is put in everything, and it fattens us like foie gras geese. It's really bad. Um, it's hard to avoid it. 66% of, no, 60% of the food that Americans consume is highly processed. Read the New York Times article about this, all right? It, it was out recently. And they have found that processed food may contribute to um, Alzheimer's, which is now the number six cause of death in our nation. So if it contributes to Alzheimer's, right, I bet it also contributes to bad thinking. <laughs> Just the thought that maybe it might affect us badly in the brain. So that is number three, corn syrup. Number four, mental disorders, because we are taught to be hyper-conscious of our body. And so we get anxiety, 
and we get depression and we get anorexia and we get bulimia and we get compulsive overeating because we are told that if we don't look like a modest supermodel without makeup, we don't really deserve a right to exist because we are here for the pleasure of men and are to blame for everything, right? It makes me so angry. Next, number five, lies. Oh no, that's wrong. Number five is the beauty industry. Okay. The beauty industry sells us a lot of crap and they keep inventing more crap to sell to us. For instance, I am overwhelmed because when I was a teenager, nobody even used an eyebrow pencil and now there are like 350 different eyebrow utensils out there. If we have the perfect eyebrow, everything will be fine. And here's how to look like a chase supermodel without makeup, right? So they sell us all this shit and we buy it and it makes a lot of money, makes a lot of money for big business, the beauty industry, not to mention under the beauty industry, I will mention the multi-billion dollar diet industry. And if you wanna talk about self-hatred, I don't diet anymore. I quit dieting about 11 months ago. I've lost 55 pounds because I stopped dieting. I eat three times a day, I eat whatever I want, I eat fruit with every meal. The only thing I gave up was corn syrup and refined sugar. The end. Um, so the diet industry though, in particular, uh, you know, when you read about what a model or an actress looks like, they're lying to you. I know this because I used to be uh, an actress and a model last century and um, you know, I thought at 5'10", I was supposed to weigh 125 pounds. That was the magic number back then. And when I got down to 125 pounds, people thought I was dying of a disease. And I had a concave ass and a concave chest. And I couldn't understand what was wrong because I'd finally gotten down to 125 pounds. We're lied to all the time. Another instance, I used to do stand-in work for... Um, every tall actress that came to down into town when I, you know, when they were shooting a movie and as a stand in, you're supposed to resemble the star so that they can set the lights. Right. So, um, one day I read Ned backstage asking for an actress to stand in for someone who I will not name a very famous tall actress. And they said height and weight requ requirements, five twelve. they wouldn't say six feet, five twelve. 115 pounds. That person does not exist because if you're six feet tall and weigh 115 pounds, you are dead, right? So we're lied to all the time. I will include religion, organized religion and big business uh, as big fat liars to us about who we are. Okay. I have covered the beauty industry and lies in the same breath, so I'm not gonna go back to that. Then we have the medical industry. Okay, so get this, get this, get how big business works. It is such a circle of fuckery. They pump us full of corn syrup and we get diabetes and all sorts of other horrible things wrong with us, high blood pressure, and then the medical industry comes in. Big Pharma and these conglomerate medical organizations and group, and they treat our illness. They treat our illness. They don't cure us. They don't tell us to stop eating corn syrup. They treat our illness, and it makes them billions and billions and billions of dollars as we suffer from illnesses while hating ourselves. Okay, where am I? I am on physical disease, okay, which I've kind of just covered with the uh, medical industry, but physical disease, um, there is only, the, the body is a funny thing. Um, it can withstand enormous trauma and be fine, or you can get knocked on the head by like a jar of peanut butter and 
get a traumatic brain industry. But this whole thing of uh, calorie deprivation and being on the you know keto diet and all this other start stuff, all this back and forth that we do and just instead of eating normally is making us sick uh, physically. It affects our minds and that's perfect because we now have uh, the medical industry who will cheat it treat us, <laughs> cheat us, yeah, that too. Um, then we have all of this stuff adding up to self-hatred and the question, why don't you just, for instance, why don't you just eat normally? Why don't you just relax? Why don't you just calm down? Why don't you just be grateful? Well, I'll tell you why, because we have these two industrial complexes telling us not to do that and giving us conflicting information to, and we feel a little crazy and that's on purpose. So we have shame, a lot of shame about who we are, right? And that goes back to Eve. Be ashamed because you're a woman well, as you can see in the middle, I've written, fuck this, fuck this. Um, and now I'm gonna talk to you about fruit. Okay, I love pineapple. I only eat good fruit. I eat a cup of fruit with every meal. I only eat really good fruit. I don't eat crap food. There is no crap food, it, fruit, no crap fruit in crap kitchen. Try and say that. Here is a pineapple. Pineapple, when it's ripe and wonderful, is a truly delicious treat. But how do you know that something that looks like this on the outside is ripe and wonderful? And I'm gonna show you. The leaves in a pineapple should come out very easily in the core. This is called the crown. So if it comes out like that, it's ripe. If it comes out, it doesn't come out and you have to pull on it, it's not ripe. Um, what you can do is if you have an unripe pineapple, I stick mine on my deck back there, right? And I like, I let the sun get it for a day or two and it ripens it up. Bananas are a kind of iffy fruit, but I like bananas and it, it's a personal thing. Um, an overripe banana gives me depression, but a the banana that is slightly green, I like. My husband likes the ripey kinds with the brown on it. I don't know what's wrong with him, but I love him, he's great. He really is great. Um, now we have grapes. I like green grapes. Green grapes! I'm very particular about them. Let me talk to you about green grapes. I shoot in black and white because I like it, but um, these are green. A grape should be very hard. Very hard. It should not, if, you're, if you press it and it presses, don't buy them. Um, they're not going to be very good. It should feel almost like a little oblong rock. And if there are two colors, like a uh, kind of a green that's pale yellow and then a brighter green, the brighter green is better, okay? Do not buy squishy grapes, they're disgusting. Apples are another thing. I like Honeycrisp, they're really good, but there's several others that aren't as expensive. They should also be very hard, like a uh, shape of a softball, but not soft like a softball, they should be rock hard and have some heaviness to them, okay? Um, lemon, so a lemon, when you squeeze it, right, you should be able to squeeze a lemon easily because that means it has a thin skin. And I'm gonna show you the difference between, so this white stuff is called the pith. This is not a great lemon. It's got a lot of pith on it, right? They tend not to be as juicy. This is a lemon, compare it to the next one and see how little pith it has. This is a lemon with thin skin and it's like the opposite of what I've told you about grapes. You should be able to press a lemon skin. If it feels hard, no. All right, that's it. I, uh, you know, I'm not the most organized person on earth. So uh, I know that this was a little haphazard, but I'm gonna try and, um, you know, take a picture of it and get more clear about the nine circles of fuckery in the comment section. But what I want you to take away from the day is eat good fruit, 
do not talk to your daughters about their bodies ever unless they ask you a question. And when they do ask you a question, answer the question without them making them feel ashamed of themselves just because they're a woman, right? I am really tired of self-hatred and it's good news because I'm in my 50s and I'm getting rid of it. Fuck yeah.